what you do to me You a fuck nigga, stay up in your lane South side, get ready, north side Hey, yo, what's good, you guys? It's Boomer, and you're watching Bali Star today. We're getting into the complete history of every Drake beef. You feel me? So, uh, yeah, man, let's get straight on into it. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna go over every Drake beef, bro. Interesting. Make sure to leave a like, just play the video if you enjoy it. Subscribe if you're new. So, we're gonna put the all star gang up in this game. All star gang up in this thing, you feel me? Uh, let's get straight on into it, man. Let's go. Record breaking and chart topping career. No rapper has found themselves in as many beefs as Drake. From jealous rivals to hip hop legends, Drake has been in the midst of. You know what's funny? Drake never really rapped like a gangster, gangster anyway, you know what I'm saying? Like, he, always, he always just rapped like. Back then, they call him soft for the way he be rapping and stuff. Yeah, he be. <laughs> I mean, I guess. I don't know if that would really play into it. I'm pretty sure it would play into it, but yeah, he, had, he I guess he was always on defensive mode all the time. You know, he's always had to defend himself. You know what I'm saying? Since yeah, back when Drake first started, man, yeah, man, they would say his content was soft, bro. It's not gangster at all. You feel me? Like yeah, so this could play into it. Of all kind of drama over the years, sometimes coming out on top and other times becoming the laughing stock of the rap world. Join us today as we embark on a captivating journey through the complete history of every Drake beef, showcasing everything from the most publicized feuds to the weirdest ones that we try not to remember. Let's waste no more time. Without further ado, let's get right into it. The first beef we are going to be looking at is Drake vs. Jay-Z. And while it may shock you to see Hove on this list, as he has worked with Drake a ton over the years, between their collaborations, the competitive attitude and cold-blooded mentality of Jay has clashed with Drake's ego quite a lot. Things first heated up between the two on DJ Khaled's I'm On One when Drake said, I'm just feeling like the throne is for the take it, watch me take it, which was both a direct shot at Hove and Kanye West, who just released their joint album, Watch the Throne, at the time. Well, at this moment, Jay-Z let the music speak for itself. Drake added even more fuel to the fire when he said that rappers collecting art was corny, and this happened to be something Jay-Z was pouring millions into at the time, so in response, Hov did not pull Drake's anything that back as he remixed We Made It and threw direct shots at Drake with the line, Sorry Miss Drizzy for so much of the art talk, silly me rapping about stuff that I really bought, and this is when the beef really escalated. It is common knowledge that Jay-Z hardly ever name drops rappers, so you know that Drake really got under his skin for him to say this. Yes, yes, yes. The feud between these two continued as Drake sent more shots Jay's way on Summer 16, saying, I used to want to be a Rockefeller, then I turned into oh, I remember that. And after Drake gave Jay-Z just one line on the pop-style remix, Jay would fire even more shots at Drake on I Got The Keys. Sending the message that nobody can mess with Hove, well, unless you're Nas, Jay-Z would remix Drake Know Yourself and KMT during the 444 tour in Toronto and after this, tensions between the two have pretty much settled down and it seems that their relationship has been more friendly than competitive since the late 2010s. With Drake and Jay-Z, their disses always seem to come from a more competitive place than a hostile one, but no. looking back on their Cold War, it is a reminder <coughs> that you should never challenge hope. The next beef we are going to be looking at is Drake vs. Kendrick Lamar, and while at the beginning of their relationship, Drake helped Kendrick rise to prominence by bringing him on his Club Paradise tour alongside ASAP Rocky, and the two worked together on tracks like Poetic Justice and Effin' Problems, but as Kendrick and Drake became the faces of modern hip-hop, the two were pitted against each other, and they have never made amends since. It all began when Kendrick called out Drake and many other of the biggest and best MCs at the time on Big Sean's Control, and Drake quickly sent back some small shots on the song language with the lines, I don't know why they're Especially, lying. Especially the way he said Drake, when he, when he was on mouth. Drake! And then, and then, Mac Miller. I love all you bottles, destroy all you niggas. 
which you ain't that inspiring, and things continue to escalate wrong. from there. Kendrick threw some major digs Drake's way during the BET Awards in 2013 with the lines, <laughs> Nothing's been the same since they dropped control, tucked a sensitive rapper back in his pajama clothes. <laughs> From here, song after song, Kendrick and Drake continued to throw subliminals at one another, with Kendrick calling out Drake for ghostwriting on King Kunta, and then the two threw even more shots at one another on the record's More Life and Damn in 2017. Beyond this point, people thought that Kendrick and Drake's tension seemed to have calmed down as Drake was even in attendance at Kendrick Lamar's Big Steppers tour last year, but after Kendrick interpolated Drake Sticky with his brand new track The Hillbillies and Drake on his tour right now just said this about artists taking a long time to drop. I don't know about these guys that all day <laughs> Many think that this beef may be starting to heat up again, but who knows? Speaking of Drake's current tour, this brings us to Drake versus Childish Gambino, and while Gambino, who is also known as Donald Glover, may be seen as a modern renaissance man for his musical acting and writing talents, he has always had something out for Drake, and nobody really knows why. It all started in 2014 when, at a concert, Gambino freestyled this. All I do is doing is sad, keep it inside. Uh, I'm the best rapper, definitely top five. I said, I cut their head off. That's every rapper different. Uh, that's Kendrick, that's Trick, that's Schoolboy, that's everyone. A few months after this moment, when asked about his feelings toward... Hold on, was this before or after Control? Did you rap that before or after Big Sean, Kendrick, and uh, Jay Electronica uh, uh, dropped Control? Drake, Gambino said that he likes Drake, but since Albury is an actor and a rapper, he feels like Drake has overshadowed his lane, which is kind of illogical. Drake was Jimmy Cooks on Degrassi, Gambino was in Community, Atlanta, played Lando Calrissian, and was in two different Spider-Man universes. You guys are clearly in different lanes when it comes to rapper actors, but beyond the point. In an interview this year, Gambino stated that his 2019 top charting and four-time Grammy winning song, This Is America, was originally supposed to be a Drake diss record. In response to years of this passive aggression and taunting from Gambino, Drake finally decided to take a shot back at him on his current It's a Blur tour while performing headlines. You can see on the stage he called This Is America the most overrated and over-awarded song. With Drake firing these shots direct in an arena of thousands at Gambino, the question is, will Gambino come back and start a full-fledged feud, or will he stay silent on this one? Speaking of full-fledged feuds, our next beef that we are looking at is Drake versus Meek Mill. Now, Drake's beef with Meek Mill marked one of the most significant moments in modern hip-hop history. It all started when Meek accused Drake of using a ghostwriter and said that he would have taken him off of their hit song Rico if he knew that Drake was not writing his own raps. While the claims Meek made about Drake were huge and really did damage his reputation to some hip-hop purists, Drake responded back hard with the song Charged Up, and after that, the near career-ending diss of Back to Back, which quickly became... Well hip-hop purist. Hit song Rico if he knew that Drake was not writing his own raps. While the claims Meek made about Drake were huge and really did damage his reputation to some hip-hop purists, Drake responded back hard with the song Charged Up, and after that, the Meek... <laughs> 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 Like, what? What do you say? Ending diss of back to back. Uh, which quickly became the, <laughs> no, it's like the anthem of defeat. Like four minutes and seconds of my. For Meek Mill. It's. I'm checking out as well as one Scathing lyrics and temp. Wait, did I make the hottest track? <laughs> Come on, man. Embarrassed me. Oh, no. <laughs> in front of the entire world. Looking back, damaging quotables embarrassed me in front of the. Oh, bitch, why the niggas make recording this shit and walk out the studio like. Entire world. Looking back on the Drake vs. Meek Mill feud, it showcased Drake's ability to clap back. This, you grow. 
back under pressure, and it cemented himself as somebody you don't want to mess with unless you are the next person we are going to be mentoring yourself as somebody you what? don't want to mess with un <laughs> unless you are the next person we are going to be that, was, uh, that, that shit was wrong as hell they it's, we, it's our tour that is your tour looking at Pusha T the origins of Drake and Pusha oh, T's man. beef can be traced back to subtle jabs and subliminal disses exchanged between the two nah I see early. that was Drake's biggest win ever bro ever like and, and, and just personally, in my opinion, in his history of beefs so far, that was the one he, I don't know, I feel like he went Super Saiyan 4 Goku in that battle, you know what I'm saying, in, uh, 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 in that type of beef. And mid-2010s, but rest were just Super Saiyan 3 or some shit. With the final track on Pusha T's Daytona Infrared, as Push called out Drake with bars like, it was written like Nas, but it came from Quentin, which referred to Quentin Miller, the ghostwriter who made Mill accuse Drake of using all the way back in 2015. After Drake responded to the shouts from Infrared with the formidable Duppy freestyle, Push dropped a bomb on the hip-hop world with the story of Adidon from the cover of the song which featured you know what Drake in black. I hear people, not to this day, but, you know, at that time say that, like, you know, it wasn't even, like, a diss. It was more just, like, I don't know, information like gossip or something. Honestly, I did not want to think then because I, like, I thought, I don't know, I thought it was a diss. Like, I thought... What like this is a diss, or like you know whether it's ex uh, it's exposing in it or whatever. But the diss, you feel me now? I guess they're trying to gray area it by saying like it's not a diss. It's like uh, it's just gossip information or something. You know what I'm saying? Like telling the whole world that he's got a son and stuff. It's like that's just gossip, or I don't know somewhere along those lines. I'm like. I, I never really thought of it like that, and I don't even know, still to this day, what to think about that. I was like, yo, I don't know, y'all let me know, man. The diss track Pistol T drop, is that just gossip or whatever? Like, or whatever, it's like, I don't know, is it just like information is not really a diss? Because, like, if I hear it's a diss track, and I'm gonna consider the whole thing a diss. It's a diss. It's a it's a diss because that's what the whole song was made to be a diss. You know, I mean, until it's obviously clearly not really a diss. You know, what I'm saying to those with common sense, it's clearly not a diss. But I thought that was like, you know, I don't know. <laughs> then again, I don't know. It's like it's exposing really dissing still. Well, think about it. If Eminem said that back at eight miles, I mean, yeah, he was exposing freaking um <clears throat> the last dude, or maybe he was just outing himself. You know what I'm saying? So that way, the next dude would have nothing to say. So it's not really exposing. I don't know, man. I guess it could. Again, people opened up that gray area. Now I was like, oh shit, damn it! Now we're getting into the specifics. <laughs> face to the lyrics which revealed to the world that Drake was hiding a child and was not being a present father according to Push, this track was the ultimate moment of humiliation and embarrassment for Drake, and while you can't end an artist as big as Drake's career, this is surely the closest anyone will come to doing so. While Pusha T was able to humiliate Drake, not many other rappers have, especially if you're- And then Drake blamed Kanye for it, for giving Pusha that information. Allegedly. Um, I don't know, man. Not to the point, Drake. You know what I'm saying? Like, homie showed up with uh, Jay Prince and all them. You know what I'm saying? It's like, oh, got that serious. Is Joe Budden. As one of the most outspoken and controversial figures in hip-hop, there is no surprise that Button has come at Drake plenty of times over the years, but the real question to look at is how much did Drake even care about what the biggest hater in hip-hop was saying about him? 
The tension between these two started when Bunnen called Drake's 2016 album Views uninspired and getting back at Joe. Drake would eventually release a snippet via French Montana's Instagram story of him interpolating the lines Pump It Up, which is a direct reference to the only hit that Joe Budden has ever had with the track Pump It Up. As soon as Budden saw this troll from Drake, his eyes lit up and he dropped not one, but two entire diss records with Making a Murder Part 1 and Wake, but ultimately, Drake got the last laugh as when his collab with French Montana No Shopping dropped, he ended this whole feud with the line, pump, pump, pump it up, I'm not a one-hit wonder, they know all my stuff. You let me turn into the rapper you almost was, which just put Pudding's chances of embarrassing Drake dead in the water. And this is not the only OG in the rap game Drake was able to shut down, as he also beefed with the one and only Common. Now, Common is a legend in the rap world, and he is one of the most important conscious rappers of all time, but he is also known for picking ill-advised battles with rappers, and when he released the track Sweet in 2011 and said the line, sing it all around me, man, la la la, you ain't Frank Sinatra trying to mock Drake, he made one of the worst mistakes of his stored career. In 2012, Rick Ross dropped the track Stay Scheming and in the coldest fashion possible, and holy comments champ this whole feud with the line pump 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 it up i'm not a one-hit wonder they know all my stuff you let me turn into the rapper you almost was which just put pudding's chances of embarrassing drake dead in the water and this is not the only og in the rap game drake was able to shut down as he also beefed with the one and holy comment now, Common is a legend in the rap world, and he is one of the most important conscious rappers of all time, but he is also known for picking ill-advised battles with rappers, and when he released the track Sweet in 2011 and said the line, sing it all around me, man, la la la, you ain't Frank Sinatra trying to mock Drake, he made one of the worst mistakes of his stored career. In 2012, Rick Ross dropped the track Stay Scheming and in the coldest fashion possible, Drake destroyed Common, calling him out for being petty and bitter on one of the biggest hit songs of that year. Trying to gain back any ground, Common made a remix to Stay Scheming called Canada Drive, but at this point, he was dead in the water with this beef, and after this, it was clear that Drake was a force to reckon with as he just defeated a true legend in the hip-hop world. By defeating Common in the eyes of the people, Drake sent a message to other rappers that while you may not like his style, you should respect him or expect the worst. While many older rappers eventually gained respect for Drake, when it came to OGs beefing with him, there was perhaps no one harsher than Diddy, who allegedly slapped Drake in 2014 for reasons that are unknown to this day. While the details on this confrontation get his way with him. are relatively unknown, this wouldn't be the first time that Diddy put his hands on a new age rapper as he also got physical with Kendrick Lamar and J. Cole at the same time. <coughs> oh, yeah, J. Cole did. But Kendrick, too? a year before in 2013. While there has never been any musical fireworks over this incident, as either rapper has yet to speak about it in any of their songs, Drake and Diddy did end up burying their differences on IG Live in 2020. As we look at another shortly lived and strange beef on this list, we have Drake versus Ludacris. Tensions rose between these two in the year 2010 when Drake said that he perfected the art of the punchline, which is a skill synonymous with Ludacris, and when explaining how he did this, he directly quoted the man saying his bar coming down the street like a parade Macy's to show what type of bad punchlines existed before Drake saved this writing technique in his own eyes. Once Luda got word of this, he responded to Drake with the track Bada Boom, where he called Drake softer than the Pillsbury Doughboy, which I guess kind of... I think of I heard that, too. Huh. I don't know. I think I remember listening to uh, that project. I think it was because of this, man. I don't remember this that well, but... Uh, uh, 
Bruce Drake's point because, God, that bar is not good. But beyond this, the beef never escalated, and Drake buried the hatchet with Luda at the 2017 Billboard Music Awards. One beef that nobody really ever talks about at this point is Drake versus Tyga, and despite being a part of Young Money Entertainment together, Tyga always envied Drake. According to people around the two, Tyga found Drake to be fake and only pretended to be friends with him because the label wanted them to. As Drake and Tyga began to build their respective solo careers, the two began throwing shade at one another through various disses and jabs, but once Tyga began dating Kylie Jenner, Drake being the king of pettiness that he is, he posted up a picture with Kylie to troll Tyga, and then he put him in the grave on 6pm in New York with the line, you need to act your age and not your girl's age, which played on the fact that Kylie was a minor when Tyga began seeing her. All in all, it is safe to say with ease that Drake won this feud. As we look at another Drake beef fueled from bitterness, we have Kid Cudi versus Drake. Damn! Drake and Cudi's beef is one that yeah, never him too. exploded, but was always pretty tense. Jeez, I guess when you really count it on the hand, it's like, yeah. Oh, shit. The fellow good music signee consequence, it all started when Kid Cudi allegedly called Drake corny at one of Kanye West's birthday parties. Now, Drake was never aware that Cuddy was not a fan of him, and this is why you can see Drake in the music video for Cuddy's track, Pursuit of Happiness. Despite Cuddy's bitterness towards Drake, things would not escalate between the two until Cuddy tweeted in 2016 that both Kanye and Drake did not Wait, hold like on, Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So they now, work... Because I remember him appearing in that uh, music video. Was that before, after Cuddy... Now, Drake and Cuddy's beef like, is one out. that never exploded, but was always pretty tense. According to fellow Good Music signee Consequence, it all started when Kid Cudi allegedly called Drake corny at one of Kanye West's birthday parties. Now, Drake was never aware that Cudi was not a fan of him, and this is why you can see Drake in the music video for Cudi's track, Pursuit of Happiness. Despite Cudi's bitterness towards Drake, things would not escalate between the two until Cudi tweeted in 2016 that both Kanye and Drake did not like him, and then similar to Meek Mill, pointed to the fact that Drake uses ghostwriters. In response to this, Drake threw shots at Cuddy on his track, Two Birds, One Stone, which he ended up receiving a lot of backlash for, as he made fun of Cuddy's mental state in the long run. Drake's insane. Yeah, no, man, I remember that. No, shit was crazy, dog. You feel me? And him, like, doubling down on the song later on. I forgot what song it was, but he doubled down on that shit. <sighs> Sensitivity ended up sparking a larger conversation about mental health awareness within the hip hop community, but fortunately, Drake and Cuddy have made up now as they teamed up yeah. on the track I Am Y2 off Drake's 2021 record CL. Which I thought that song was like, it was I right, man. Like, I tried to like it like a Kid Cuddy song, Man on the Moon, Mr. Rager, by the way. <clears throat> as I try to treat it as like, you know, one of his earlier songs, actually, Man on the Moon 3 was kind of I right, too. Well, I mean, I guess it was, I don't know. I just, I try to high, uh, 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 hold it in like high caliber of it being one of those type of songs, but it just it just wasn't hitting it uh, like that for me. That song was, it was cool. As we finish looking at Kid Cudi and Drake's beef, we look at Drake's most complicated feud, which is, of course, with the one and only Kanye West. The dynamic between Drake and Kanye has oscillated between friendship and rivalry over the years. Since Drake's blown up, it seemed like him and Kanye have always been at odds. From Kanye directing and allegedly sabotaging Drake's first music video with Best I Ever Had, to Drake calling out Ye for the throne on I'm On One, it seemed like these two were always at hedge against one another. Despite the odds they were at in the early 2010s, Ye and Drake were seen as friends again after Kanye performed with Drake at OVO Fest in 2013, and in 2015, Kanye said they were working on an entire collab album. From this point on, relations continued to sail smoothly until Kanye started ranting on stage during the St. Pablo tour and said that Drake's song with DJ Khaled for free was a lazy attempt at controlling the charts. While Drake didn't retaliate after Kanye said this, the beef would heat up in 2018 as Kanye West produced Pusha T's song Infrared and right alongside Push, Ye became a direct target of Drake's dubby freestyle and Drake even accused Kanye of telling Push about the kid he had had which Ye ultimately denied. 
Things only heated up from here in the summer of 2018 right, as when Drake released Scorpion, the line from the song In My Feelings, Kiki, Do You Love Me, spurred rumors that Drake had slept with Kanye's wife, Kim Kardashian. That's what he and wanted, despite too. Drake saying that this was about a former lover Probably and not too. Kim Kardashian, Kanye exploded on him saying all of this. After this, tensions would settle down and they would not rise again until 2021, where both rappers were rumored to drop their massive anticipated albums, Donda and Certified Lover Boy, at the same time, and things went crazy from here. Kanye and Drake were going back and forth with insults, and yay, even docs Drake. I mean, things... you know what's funny? Is that like this sort of looks like lights on? I mean, I mean, lights off and lights on showing all the baby mamas that like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. I just, I just thought of seeing it that way for a second. It's like, you turn off the light in your room, they you turn it on, and you know, there's like freaking 18 baby mamas in your room. And certified lover boy at the same like, time, the and things went crazy from here. Kanye and Drake were going back and forth with insults I can only and yanking and dox Drake. I mean, things got very out of hand. The tension these artists set up between them made the releases of Donda and Certified Lover Boy feel like a musical boxing match. And when these records came out just days apart from one another, the entire world was in a frenzy talking about what record yeah, was like young After Gabriel the tension Union. had shrunk down between these two, Jay Prince helped Kanye and Drake amend their differences, and they teamed up for the Free Larry Hoover concert. And after a decade of back and forth pettiness, which was a failed attempt, by the way, finally back to being friends again. Free Larry Just Hoover. as we finally thought peace was restored, Drake had to say, "Linking with the Ops, I did that for Jay Prince on Circle Loco from his 2022 album Her Loss." So even after all of the ups and downs with Kanye, it seems that the Paris feud is far from over. And while not a rapper, one of Drake's most iconic feuds was with Chris Brown, and it all started when they got into a physical fight over Rihanna at a New York City nightclub in 2012. Their teams were throwing liquor bottles across the club at one another, and Drake even told Chris Brown that he is sleeping with the love of his life. Wait, After what? Nightclub in 2012. Their teams were throwing liquor bottles across the club at one another, and Drake even told Chris Brown that he is sleeping with the love of his life. After years of debates and years of people pitting these two against each other, they would finally make up, releasing the smash hit No Guidance in 2019. So there you have it. There is every single Drake beef in his career. What we can take away from all of the beefs that Drake has been in is that when you are at the top in something, people are always going to come for you. While Drake has been embarrassed a couple of times in his career, most of the times he has been able to edge out rappers even when they're legends and for some of the bigger rappers like Kendrick Lamar on this list, everything just remains cold to this day. Do you think Drake will add any more beasts to this list in the future? Do you think beasts with Childish Gambino and Kendrick Lamar will escalate any more? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, smash that like button and if you want to hear how Drake is contributing to the biggest problem in hip-hop right now, check out the suggested video. Thank you so much for watching. You're hmm. Alright, you guys, so that was uh, the complete history of every Drake beef, you know what I'm saying, by Fantastic Hip Hop. Man, shout out to that channel. Wow. Like I said, man, when you really count it up, bro, yeah, I guess that is a lot. Like, and each one of them was, like, that's when you found out Jake was just not that dude to be effed with. It was like, you, dude, you never thought, I never thought the dude from, the dude in the wheelchair from the grassy, you know what I'm saying, was like, edge out most of these damn rappers. I'm like, who is this nigga? Oh my, like, bro, Meek Mill? Meek Mill, that's when I knew this nigga was different. This nigga was different. The fact that Meek Mill could even come back with a cut, dude, it really felt like an Eminem 8 Mile moment to me personally. You know what I'm saying? Just completely shut the nigga up. Nigga did not drop a diss until like, what, three, four years later? Two years later? I was like, ain't no fucking way. This nigga delayed Meek's diss on him. Drop a charged up. It's almost like he dropped charged up just to get charged up before. You know what I'm saying? Before he let out a full blast of back to back, bro. It was like it charged up. Now we're going back to back. Boom! 
I don't know what the hell that was just, just right there. But it's like, bro, it's like, nah, the first was just to load up and then then came the freaking, like, you know what I'm saying, when you charged up your super soaker gun and stuff, you know what I'm saying, before you let out, like, a big, like, fucking big-ass spout of a blast and shit. That's just what it was. And, you know, hit this nigga so hard, he delayed until, like, freaking three, four years later, when, you know what I'm saying, which took him the time to make a disc back. This nigga delayed this nigga, bro. So I was like, home alone ass face and uh, 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 on my expression. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, yo, ain't no fucking way, boy. Bro, ain't no way, bro. You feel me? Like, so yeah, like every other beef man just continued to uh, impress in a way. Uh, the Pusha T one, I thought Pusha T had that. I thought that was a diss. I don't care what it was, you know what I'm saying? Whether it was an exposed or a gossip or what. I, 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 it, it, it was a diss. You know what I'm saying? The exposed like that is a diss. You feel me? Um, yeah, to get outed of personal and true information like that for Drake not to have a response to that, th th that's a diss. You feel me? So Pusha T got that, you feel me? I know OVO fans are gonna be mad at that one, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Cause even I tried to think it wasn't a diss for a while, you know what I'm saying? Just opening up that gray area. I was like, yeah, oh, I, I guess I can, I, I, I don't see that being a diss. But no, it's a diss, yeah, no. Nah. It's a diss, you know, once you start looking at it through an, through an unbiased lens, it's a diss, you feel me? Um, but yeah, nah, man, so much still going strong to this day. <laughs> <laughs> Drake is a petty king. You feel me? Uh, I swear, if you just watch my KSI video, if y'all know who KSI is, you know what I'm saying? See my video about that. I'll say the same thing uh, for KSI. I'll say the same thing about Drake. You feel me? Drake is competitive. Drake is competitive. To have that level of pettiness is competitiveness. You feel me? <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> like, yeah, like, was it for the fun of the sport or on some personal shit? Like, yeah, nah, it wouldn't, when it's in the camera and you're, you know what I'm saying? I won't say it's like a game, you know what I'm saying? You're playing this like a game, but it's like, it's yeah, again, it's a sport, you know what I'm saying? And, and that's why I say like, it is for the fun of the sport. Or sports sometimes can get, but nah, there's some dudes, you know what I'm saying, who, who, you know, who you face on different teams in basketball, and... You know, you don't like, old, you know, you don't like dude, you feel me? So it's like, bro, you could just get one excuse, just, just one. <laughs> but no, 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 I'm just saying, it's the same in hip hop too, of course, you feel me? Well, again, it would be a fun of the sport, just sometimes, like, there's just, just that dude, you just, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, no, nah, nah, like, that level of pettiness, man, like, <laughs> yeah, trust me, I've watched, uh, Community, Childish Gambino was on Community. I, I like, I have freaking um DVD sets of that show. I think two seasons or whatever. I don't already know, but no, no, one season. So yeah, I like and just going off his character, but then that just be his character. But you know, seeing Childish Gambino and also different things, and also seeing some of his some of his interviews, I know. <laughs> <laughs> this nigga, you like you look at what Drake did. He was like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> he treated it exactly like that, my nigga. I know he did exactly just that. He laughed like, <laughs> and then he said, okay, all right, all right. You won't do this to me. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying, Jake? Like, bro. But, yeah, bro. Nah, but, yeah, I don't know what I was going to say earlier. Freaking, I treat KSI the same way I could treat Drake, you know what I'm saying? Because it's like, you know, I I could think the dude is the funniest mug in the world. But if we're talking competition, you feel me? I hope he doesn't cross my way. You feel me? Because it's like, dude, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, like, you know, again, but only if it, like, you know what I'm saying? If you mingle, like, no, because most times, like, people won't even mingle that way, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, yo, what's good, you know what I'm saying? And we just, you know what I'm saying? We just 
freaking just collabed on stuff without even having it go there, then yeah, that would be dope as fuck. You feel me? That'd be tight. You feel me? Um, or uh, but that's why I say it is what it is. You feel me? But hey, man, that's just you no know, competition. You know what I'm saying? That's just yeah. Uh, you gotta have competition sometimes. You know, sometimes, not all the time. You feel me? Only when it's necessary, and you have the common sense. No, when it's necessary. You feel me? So. Yeah, man, y'all let me know your thoughts about this whole thing down in the comment section down below. You already know it's Boomer and Do, my friend, are watching Bali Star. You feel me? Make sure to leave a like, just support the video if you enjoy, subscribe if you're new, so that we can join up the All Star gang up in this thing. Brand new album, The Cursive Blessing. The Love. You feel me? Want to know more about your boy and, you know, his, you know what I'm saying? Hey, bruh. It's right here, you feel me? So you don't even have to look for it 100. I don't know what to do. I just want you to come to me. 13, nigga. I was like fucking 19, nigga. Again, been done detox, my nigga. That means I've been smoking and detoxing before you even fucking find out what the fuck weed was, nigga. I've been on OG Kush, nigga. The fuck? What, 19? It was like, what, 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 what? Fucking 2020, nigga? <laughs> Tell me you started smoking in 2020, but you started smoking 2020, my nigga. I've been smoking since fucking 2000 and fucking 16. <laughs> four years before. No, 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 four years before. Yeah, four years before, nigga. I've been, yeah, nigga. Been smoking ever since your ass was still well, fucking watching Barbie and shit, holding dolls and shit, nigga. I'm about to read the label. No, no, man. I'm talking about read the label, nigga. Of course, I'm gonna read the label. I know what to do with this shit, my nigga. Shit, me already complaining about like the damn. Don't tell me what to fucking do, nigga. The fuck? The fuck? Tell me. I mean, tell me what's good, nigga. In hip hop, beefs between artists have always been a central part of the culture. From the way they fuel the genre's competitive spirit to how they ignite heated discussions between fans, two rappers clashing at the height of their power is something that we expect to see at this point. Throughout his. I don't know what to do. I just want you to come to me. 